relationship advice. Told my best friend that his brother, my other best friend, was hooking up with his fiance behind his back. Everyone but who I told is mad at me. There is some history and context to this story and I'll try to provide as much info as I can. Names are changed for privacy. Background, there are four main people in this story. Brandon, Roger, and Tony. Roger and Tony are brothers. I grew up with Brandon and Tony and have been best friends with these guys for the better part of 15 years. I got closer with Roger as years went on and have a lot of fun with him, Tony and I drifted away kinda due to living our lives and having our own things going on. Brandon has pretty much always been around. During the thrive of our friendship, Roger was getting married to his new girl who is absolutely awesome, they even have a kid together now. Shortly before their wedding, I had broken up with my longtime girlfriend of 4 years and just kinda gained some confidence to date again. During my time with my ex-girlfriend, Brandon was dating her younger sister. The sister had broken up with Brandon and I and my girlfriend had split shortly after for unrelated reasons. I decided to take a vacation for myself before Roger's wedding and reconnected with an old fling. During the time, I had not been completely over my ex and the new girl knew this so we decided to keep things slow. At that point, Brandon had been hanging out with my ex-girlfriend days after we broke up and they started banging each other. This tore me apart. I was so angry that he was doing this just after we broke up. I didn't find out right away. Instead my ex-girlfriend told me and had accused him of violating her. Now I didn't want to believe her, but I also knew Brandon was a scandalous guy who always cheated on every girlfriend he has. He likes to take advantage of the broken girls. I received a lot backlash from people for being friends with him because of that. So, I believe my ex. Things got bad between Brandon and I. So bad we almost fought and police were getting involved. Mind you, not once did he ever say she was wrong, or even apologize to me for doing so. A year goes by, and my ex-girlfriend came clean and said it wasn't true. I immediately apologized to Brandon for believing her. I was a mess, I hated her for lying and I hated Brandon for what he did. Brandon showed no remorse and didn't care how I felt in response of his actions. Even after I apologized. Things got so bad for me mentally I decided to see a therapist. It took some time but I learned to control my dark thoughts and emotions. Between these crazy thoughts and emotions, and being a full-time student working full-time, had taken its toll on me. Eventually I buried the past and tried to move like nothing happened. Now to the story, COVID happened. I haven't seen my friends in a while due to having a family I worked with and a girlfriend with family. Who have compromised immune systems. We try to see friends on a safe level. I would occasionally invite the guys over for drinks and card games. During the time, I introduced Roger and Brandon to each other due to that they never really hung out with each other. Well, this is where things got weird. I would try to see Tony at his work to hang since he worked an opposite shift of mine or go to his house to watch football games. But during the time Brandon and Roger were hanging out separately as well. That's cool, I didn't care. Only until I would try to hang out with them both and they would start to exclude me from the normal sh** we would do. I had no idea why this was happening. I asked them if there was any reason. I was actually ignored when I questioned them. I got kinda frustrated, I asked again, and I was told I was taking it too serious, and being a pissy about the whole thing. I was so in the dark about why my friends didn't want to hang out with me anymore, I was truly confused and kinda hurt. Finally I just said, screw it. I'm just not gonna entertain this anymore and decided to stop trying to talk to either of them. Well during this time Roger had gotten fired from a job we were working at, for stealing and being drunk on the job. We were old friends with the owner in which our circle of friends would come visit us. When he got fired. The owner informed me that Tony's fiancé was coming in late and waiting for everyone to leave, so Roger and her could hook up. This was messed up in my head. How could someone do that to someone else's own family? It reminded me of what Brandon did to me sort of. I sat on this information for a couple of weeks. I told me fiancé about it, and she agreed. I mentioned this to Brandon and asked what he thought. He said that it's no one's business and stuff happens all the time. That if no one talks about it, everyone will be fine. This was one of the few conversations I had with Brandon after I stopped involving myself with the group. We ended up getting into a massive argument about what's right and wrong. He was defending Roger's actions, and saying they were fine and he had no problem with it. He also told me not to say anything just to keep the peace. This logic made zero sense to me, so I got angry with him. After a long conversation with my fiancé, I decided it was best for Tony to know what was happening, but to also let him know. People at my work even knew about it. It was bound to come out. I explained to him what we found out, 
from who, and who was covering it up. Now I have a couple friends who think I'm the a-hole for telling Tony. I lost more than just a couple friends, a huge circle has decided I was the a-hole because I started the fire. Mind you Tony called me back after digging into it and thanked me for telling him. I'm torn in my head. I believe what I did was right. I don't condone cheating and I'm not going to be a part of covering it up. Now for the top comments. Bro, I'm gonna be honest with you. Your friends sound like a-holes and people who aren't worth being around. If it were me, I'd probably find another job and ghost a lot of them. I would even be open to switching careers and removing just to be around decent people. That's what my fiancé told me. I work two jobs. The second job is where it all happened. I was only there one day a week. The whole lot of them suck and made me think what I did was wrong. Just gonna focus on working and planning this wedding. Thanks for the advice. Yeah, those friends sound like infantile dude bros. Get rid of them. Hope Tony cut them both out of his life. If you were in Tony's place would you want your friends to act like what you did or just cover it up? I'm going to connect with him next week after some dust settles. But hell no. I'm a huge advocate of just telling the truth. If someone screws up and tells me straight up. I believe there's a better chance to mend things. Mend things. Do you really have a thing for being accepted by these people, don't you? They all sound like a-holes, except for Tony and your girlfriend. No, those friends are cut out completely. I don't have time for that. I just want to make sure Tony knows that I'm in his corner. I guess I used the wrong words there. Thanks for pointing that out. Your friends are weak people. Weak of will and weak of moral fortitude. You did the right thing. Never doubt that. You found one true friend out of it hopefully as well, and no one ever said doing the right thing is easy. My fiancé said almost the exact same words. I believed her, and I don't know, I guess I still felt awful. I feel utterly horrified for what Tony has been through. I'm going to try and see him a bit more. He deserved none of this. Now for the last story. Update. Me, 23 female, with my friend, 23 female, she cheated on her boyfriend slash my friend, 25 male, and doesn't want to come clean. Original post. My friend, let's call her Sarah, cheated on her boyfriend and one of my good friends, James. I'm honestly flabbergasted since I never expected anything like this would happen. I've met James in 2010 when we both joined the same class. We spent two years together in this class but didn't get along too well, we talked, but never met up outside of school. We were friendly with each other, but not friends. We both parted ways and did our own thing. Which happened to be the same thing, again. We spent the next two years in the same class once again and actually became friends. We met up outside of school, studied together, etc. In the last year, we both met Sarah because she joined our class. They fell in love immediately, have been together ever since, 4 years, and started slacking in school. I did my own thing, but Sarah and I became friends, too. Nowadays we meet up once or twice a month to talk or watch movies. We usually text each other on a weekly basis. Sarah apparently went clubbing with her best friend, 24 female, who happens to be bi. They drank a lot, went home to her friend's flat and watched some Netflix. Then one thing led to another, what the heck does that even mean? and they started making out. And more. Sarah was on her period so her friend couldn't eat her out, but Sarah decided to eat her out and they basically went all in. She told me all this last night because it was her first time with a woman and she felt weird afterwards. When I asked her when she wants to tell James about it she said she probably wouldn't tell him at all because he would likely end the relationship. He once got mad when she kissed said friend a year ago because he thought they were making out, although it was just a small kiss. I told her that she should still tell him because he has a right to know. She thinks that it wasn't even real cheating because it was with a woman and if he knew about it before it happened he'd be really into it. She also doesn't feel too bad about it, just weird. What the hell do I do reddit? They're both my friends and I honestly want to tell him about it because he deserves to know the truth and decide for himself if this is a deal breaker for him, it 100% will be. However, they've got a big trip planned for next week and will be gone two weeks. Do I tell him if she won't? If yes, do I tell him before or after the trip? It's not refundable and he is so excited for it. She asked me not to tell him and I of course said sure, but that was when I thought she wanted to tell him. It just feels wrong not to tell him, but I don't want to be the reason their relationship ends. My boyfriend told me to wait for a bit and maybe she'll tell him then, but I honestly don't think so. She just seems so. Nonchalant about it. 
The only thing that really bothered her was the weird feeling about eating out a woman, not cheating on her boyfriend. I'd be so mad if James knew my boyfriend cheated on me and didn't tell me, so I guess I should definitely tell him? Help me, please. Now for the top advice before reading the update. If you don't tell him, you should stop thinking of yourself as his friend. Friends don't let their friends get cheated on and leave them in the dark about it. If you are going to tell him, do it soon. I think it's reasonable to give her the chance to come clean as long as she does it in a timely manner. If you wait weeks and they go on that trip you risk damaging your friendship. He may feel you held back vital information from him. Hey, thanks for taking the time to comment. I will definitely tell him, even if it means losing her as a friend. He deserves to know the truth. I'll give her one more chance and if she won't tell him, I will do it. Thank you. You have no indication if she will tell him, you only have an indication that she won't tell him. And she won't because she knows she cheated, she knows he will break up with her and now she's spinning it. Because she doesn't want to lose the relationship. It is real cheating. You gotta make a choice between your conscience and your friends. If you don't tell your conscience will probably keep bothering you about it for a while as it is doing now. If you do tell be prepared to lose the cheating friend because she won't appreciate this one bit. Can't say if you lose the male friend too, but if you tell, he might be pissed at you first but that is just a first reaction, do not give it too much value. If you are going to tell, do so before the trip, if you tell after that trip will always have a black mark on it and a trip is more expensive than just the hotel and flight. As a last thing, I would tell him OP and if I was the male I would like to be told. Hey, thanks for your comment. I really think you hit the nail on the head, she knows she cheated and is now trying to spin it. I'm definitely prepared to lose her and even though I'll probably be sad about it, I don't even want to have her as a friend if she values her relationship so little. I'll text her today and tell her that she absolutely needs to tell him and if she still won't, I will do it. Thank you. And now for the update. The TLDR of the original post is basically this, my friend Sarah cheated on her boyfriend James, who happens to be my friend, too. She didn't want to tell him because he'd likely end the relationship and they had a big trip planned. I didn't know if I should tell him, my gut told me yes, definitely, or stay out of it. After I posted here, Sarah decided to tell James parts of the truth and told me to stay out of it. I decided not to do that since he deserved the whole truth. I wanted to tell him in person, but he couldn't meet up because he was at a family gathering or something like it, I don't remember. He called and asked me what I wanted to meet up for and I told him the whole truth. That she cheated on him with her best friend, that she didn't tell him everything that happened, etc. I was worried she got to him somehow and that he wouldn't believe me, but he thankfully did. I still send him every text I had of her, which was probably incredibly helpful. While I was talking to him she sorta knew what was happening and drove over to his place immediately. When she got there, he hung up and they talked. She tried to weasel her way out of it, but since he had her texts, that didn't work out too well. Before she came over, he told me this was the last straw, especially since she lied to him about it and made out with said friend once before. I don't know what she did or what she said, but he did a complete 180 and suddenly he was okay with it. I've only talked to him twice since then and he told me that it's not such a big deal and they'd get over it. They've completely cut me out of their lives. When I asked him why, he said he wanted to wait until his girlfriend and I had a talk and could get along again, which isn't happening, since I don't want to be friends with her anymore. It sucks that I've lost my two best friends, even though I wasn't even the one who messed up, but at least I can sleep normally again. Now for closing comments. You did the right thing. I guess you already knew you would lose Sarah as a friend. It's a shame that James stayed with her, because she is not sorry and will most likely cheat again. But you can't live someone else's life for them. Sucks for you though. Maybe he will come to his senses soon. Anyway, you should start looking for some new friends. Thank you. I will start looking for new friends soon. People seem to always come back around too. The guy is probably in a little denial and trying to make things work with her, but he'll thank you later, I think. The weird thing is that, he already thanked me. When they got back from their big trip, he texted me, told me about the trip and thanked me for being a good friend. He'll believe how big of a deal this is once he catches an STD or she gets pregnant with another man's baby. You've done all that you can slash should. He will one day see her for what she is. As for you, you can move on knowing you did the right thing. Now go find some new friends who aren't stupid. Sounds like wishful thinking, the vast majority of people who cheat don't get STDs or pregnant. This happened to me once. 
I told my close friend that I had known since elementary school that his girlfriend was cheating on him with my other friend's cousin. I had all the proof, texts, screenshots, pictures, everything. I cried in front of him because I felt so bad doing this to him. I wanted him to get away. She found out it was me, things got really bad, she tried to have me hit her with my car. She was crazy. He ended up forgiving her, again, she cheated multiple times. He blocked me on everything. I was devastated. Two years later, I got a Facebook friend request from him. I accepted. He then messaged me on there and said, I'm sorry for how big of a douchebag I was when I was under the spell of a succubus. I was wary because I had heard this all before. He then told me all the changes he made and how he was moving hours away to get away from her. Starting over. He has kept his word. He is happy and away from her and it's been years now. I have my friend back and it's the best feeling ever. He may live further away from me now, but he's happy and that's all that matters. I honestly thought, at the time, we would never be friends again. This girl had him under her thumb and he'd believe everything she told him, like, that a good guy friend just bought her a car because they were friends. Yeah no. Her kitty bought that car bro. He was in an abusive relationship. Your friend, is in an abusive relationship. Keep that in mind. There may be a day he comes back, maybe for help getting out, maybe to tell you he got away. Either way, while it hurts now, he is someone that is broken. Don't push him away if he tries comes back. That succubus has a tight grip. They may wiggle free someday. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone. Surviving Infidelity. As I suspected, my wayward wife has contacted her affair partner. She will now face the consequences. Original post, I am approaching the one year anniversary of my D-Day. Here is my story. We are both in our mid 40s. We have been together for more than 30 years, since high school. We have two teenage children. My wife, her choice, has been a stay at home mom for most of the last 15 years, whilst I have worked hard in a stressful but well paid job to provide for our family. A few years ago my wife and I went through the traumatic experience of the death of one of our children. My wife struggled more than myself, I tried to remain strong for her and our other children, she had bereavement counseling but that did not help her. Her mental state due to our loss was all over the place and things got progressively worse with our marriage. Around two years ago, we had a massive drunken argument, I said lots of nasty things, called her names, no physical abuse. I was stupid and immature, I did not apologize for my outburst and this resulted in a dead bedroom and a lack of good communication. I turned to alcohol and I became depressed about the whole situation. This time last year, I was considering divorce. I wanted things to get better between us, but I knew we both had to change for that to happen. As a last throw of the dice, I suggested marriage counseling, she declined, but I had individual counseling. This helped me, I gave up drinking, I also lost weight and got into my best ever physical shape with lots of exercise. My mental health and attitude towards my wife improved. We were both happier, we had just started becoming intimate again and it looked like our marriage could survive. So things were looking up again, until by sheer chance I discovered her affair. In retrospect, there were lots of red flags, but I always trusted her and assumed she would never cheat on me. I did some snooping and confronted her with only a small amount of what I knew. Initially, the affair was denied and I got trickle truth. For example, she told me she had only kissed her affair partner a few times, but her story had lots of holes in it. I caught her totally off guard with the confrontation and my questions. The next day, I was all set to show her my proof that they had gone beyond kissing each other, when she admitted to having unprotected intercourse on more than one occasion with the affair partner, but it was over now as he had finished it. The physical affair had started not longer after our big drunken argument the year before. She came out with the classic line, I still loved you, but was no longer in love with you. She recently told me that because of the arguments that she thought I no longer loved her when her affair started. This was not true, I did still love her, despite our problems, as she would have found out if we were communicating and had asked me. Following her confession, I took my wife's phone off her. She gave me the passcode and passwords to email and social media apps. I read all their available messages, there were gaps in chats probably removed just before her confession of the physical affair, but by now, I had pretty much the full story. The day after I messaged the affair partner from my wife's phone to get his side of the story, and to threaten him should he carry on seeing my wife. His story matched my wife's version. 
He had finished the physical affair due to the damage it would cause to both families and he wanted a life with his betrayed spouse and not my ward wife. He told me what an amazing person my wife was, she had fallen for him and that's when he ended it because it was getting too serious for him. He apologized to me and said that he would tell his wife what he had done. I told him that was up to him as I didn't want someone else to suffer the pain I had suffered. I told him that if he ever saw my wife again, then I would tell his wife. I did not tell him to break off contact because my plan was to install Keylogger software on my wife's phone. Bear in mind that we were in the middle of lockdown at this point in time, so there was no way that they could see each other. For the next few weeks, they would message each other. My wife told her affair partner that I knew about them. The affair partner did not tell her that I had messaged him. It was amusing to watch this unfold, they were now having arguments and blaming each other for their affair. My wife in an attempt to save our marriage or stop me kicking her out of our house, was love bombing me, and at the same time giving her affair partner gripes for using her and treating her badly. However, she also said she wished that they could see each other and chat properly about what had happened. She did appear to show remorse for how much her actions had hurt me. She admitted to me that she had been selfish. I asked her if she had ever cheated on me before, she answered that with a subtle difference to the question that it was her one and only affair, I am now suspicious she had a one night stand with a former boyfriend many years ago, but I have no proof. She said she had fallen back in love with me because I had changed for the better. But as we all know, actions speak louder than words, and you cannot believe a word that a cheater says. Even at this point she was still sending messages to him, although they were innocent messages as they were discussing their hobby which is where they first met and got to know each other as friends. I phoned a lawyer to discuss my options and see how things would look should we divorce. My wife overheard some of the conversation and this seemed to wake her up to the reality of the situation. Soon after my wife sent a final message to the affair partner telling him that she would not be chatting any longer and he was not to get in touch with her ever again. Contact between them did stop, and at this point, I gave her some boundaries and the consequences should she break them. One of the rules was, no contact or see the affair partner ever again, and if he contacted her to let me know immediately. I told her if she broke that rule, I would divorce her. She agreed to this. I told her she needed counseling to work on herself and find the reasons why she did what she did. She agreed, although said she felt forced to go, but only went twice and then stopped, telling me she already knows the reasons for her affair, so did not need any more counseling. I saw the same counselor a dozen times, and despite client confidentiality my counselor did tell me my wife was remorseful. This was a few months ago. My wife and I have been getting on better than ever. I do love her but I have not forgiven her yet. There has been no contact between my wife and her affair partner, but I have reason to believe that may change shortly. Finally, given all that information, the questions I have are, 1. Does anyone think my wife has any chance of redeeming herself and remaining faithful to me or should I run a mile? 2. Should she contact the affair partner again? as I suspect she will, even though it will be to chat about something innocent, should I file for divorce as she will have broken the no contact rule? 3. If divorce is not the answer. Is there anything else she or I should do for a successful reconciliation? Now let's read the top advice before reading the update. Cheaters are prone to what I call bursts. She will remain totally 100% faithful to you, 100%. Until she doesn't. Right now. You're just sitting wondering how long this burst of loyalty will last. Have reason to believe that may change shortly. I do know about you, but I can't live like this. I come home to be at peace, my marriage is my safe port in the storm. Being a jailer? Nah, I wasn't built for that. Once you reach 49, you'll find you don't have the stomach for drama anymore. Either she's with me or she isn't. If she isn't fully committed, bon voyage, it's been fun. This 1000% she was with him, you caught her. She was kind of loyal, to not lose OP. But she kept talking to him, because she wanted both. Only after OP showed seriousness and assertiveness, by calling a lawyer, she decided that she didn't want to be divorced, she didn't want to lose OP. That's because getting divorced and losing OP are part of the cake she wants to have and eat it too, so she started feeling bad because she was losing it. So, she is feeling bad, to make it stop and solve the problem equals love bombing and stop talking to a fair partner. That is because one, OP is easier to gain, and 2, more damaging to lose. When the dust settles and you are okay, the game continues, maybe not with a fair partner, maybe another one. The only one I would put a little trust on, would be on the affair partner, if he told his wife out of guilt and morals. He took the initiative and stopped it willingly. But he kept talking to your wife, I view it as him not wanting OP's wife to cause mess in his life. OP, first you don't need more reasons to divorce, you have already lost your trust, don't lose your time, also, 
18 kids won't grow well in a toxic environment, and you are showing them to put up with disrespect and cheating. Second, tell affair partner's wife, have some morals. Maybe you don't see it this way because your wife's affair was short and ended, imagine being married and discover that during said marriage, there had been an affair for years, years of your life wasted on someone who is not worth it. Don't deprive her of information, if she forgives him or not should be her decision. It hurts, but she needs to know. So, nobody is gonna let his wife know? You are protecting them thus making it easy for them to continue despite threats you make. Expose that crap. If I had been on here just prior to D-Day then I would have handled things differently. There is a reason I don't want to expose now, I will cover that separately. For me it looks like you didn't tell his wife, afraid he might get divorced and then be available to your wife, ending up leaving you, since she clearly has feelings for him. That was one of my considerations at D-Day. Things have changed since then. I am certain my wayward wife and affair partner will not be getting together again. And now for the update. I posted my story a couple of weeks ago. I received lots of helpful advice and also some vitriol in the chat function. I read all the replies, but could not respond to all of them due to time. I ignored the abuse, there are some strange people out there, no idea what your agenda is, but it's water off a duck's back to me. To recap, the timeline is not exact but the story is. We have been together for over 30 years, we started dating at high school. Two years ago, my wife and I were going through a rough patch and she had an affair. D-Day was 12 months ago at the start of lockdown. Unbeknown to my wife, I read some of their messages. It appeared as though the physical affair was over, but they were still in contact. I later discovered that he had finished the physical affair seven months prior to D-Day, probably because my wayward wife had fallen in love with him and he was never going to leave his wife. She was upset and hurt that he had dumped her, especially as he had told my wife that he loved her. They remained friends and continued to message each other. My wife told him that she could not get him out of her head. This time last year I had never heard of Reddit, I did not know who to ask for help or advice. I know my methods are a bit messed up, but my cunning plan was to try and get the whole truth about the affair and determine if our marriage could be saved. Not an easy thing to do when you cannot believe a word a cheater says. My wife could not see the affair partner, so I assumed she would contact him using her phone to tell him that I knew about their affair. For the next six months, whilst we were supposedly trying to fix things, I could without my wife's knowledge see their messages. Some brief highlights are as follows. They both lied to each other and they both blamed each other for the affair. He said their friendship crossed the line and he regretted what they did. My wife never said she regretted the affair. He cherished their moments together but also wanted to try and forget it ever happened, an oxymoron? My wife told him that she hated him and that he had used her, he denied this, but other times she said that she missed him, also contradictory. She said that she was broken and she could not live with the hurt she had caused me, so at times she did display some signs of remorse. On a number of occasions, she said that she would not be able to see him again and she was not going to contact him ever again, a few days later she would message him. During these six months, I got myself into great physical shape, I had individual counseling, there was hysterical bonding. My wife told me that she had made a huge mistake, she wanted a future with me, I meant the world to her, she had fallen back in love with me. I asked her if she could go back in time and change things, what would she do differently? Her reply was to not let a good friendship turn into an affair, and fix things between us before the affair started. She told me that she would accept any consequences, but begged me not to tell our children what she had done. Our children do not deserve to be hurt. The truth was, she did not want them to hate her. On the plus side, my wayward wife did not say anything derogatory about me to the affair partner, at least not from the messages I have read, but she must have said stuff about our marriage to him previously. He said things like, I hope you can correct the things that were wrong between you, I hope you can move forward, etc. On the negative side, my wayward wife told him that I loved her and she was going to be okay, presumably because she thought I was not going to leave her, but she never said to the affair partner that she loved me. At one point, she got angry with the affair partner and said all I need is my children. She never said that she needed me or loved me. Six months ago, I thought reconciliation was going to be impossible. I rang a lawyer to discuss my options, my wife eavesdropped on some of the conversation, I don't know how much she heard, but this was the wake-up call she obviously needed. At this point her attitude changed and she finally broke off contact with the affair partner. I set some boundaries and consequences. The main one being, no contact under any circumstances otherwise I will divorce her, she agreed to all my conditions. Given all the messages I had read between them I was doubtful that she would not contact him again. 
but for five months she maintained no contact, and things seemed to be going in the right direction between us. A few weeks ago, my wife discovered from a mutual friend of theirs that the affair partner has an incurable disease. I thought she would contact him and sure enough she has done. She has betrayed my trust yet again. The messages were innocent enough to begin with, she sent him positive thoughts, she hoped the treatment would be a success, but then she said, get better soon and look forward to seeing you soon. And the final dagger into my broken heart, wayward wife, one last thing. Do you regret meeting me? A fair partner, no. Wayward wife, good, me neither. That's all folks. I am done with her, there is nothing left worth fighting for. I know divorce is going to cause me and our children hurt and financial hardship. I know she has mental issues, but she is not willing to get help and I cannot force her. I know there is no point wasting any additional time trying to understand her actions, but I still wonder how she could do this to me and our children. I am going to speak to a lawyer again, this time without her knowing and get her served. I hope to get joint custody of our children. The starting point for the split of our financial assets will be 50-50, but I want to try and get more than this by hook or by crook. I will be receiving some inheritance once the house of my deceased relative is sold. I also have Bitcoin that I purchased a few years ago and the value of this has increased to a nice amount of money. I also have a large pension pot. Is it possible to prevent my soon-to-be ex-wife getting her hands on the proceeds? Edit, thanks everyone for your replies. Some really helpful info. I am in the UK. I will try and answer as many questions as I can. Now for some comments. I am so sorry she did this to you but you're making the right choice. So sick that she thinks it's okay to even be that way toward her affair partner, but not toward you. The very person who stood beside her even when she torched your whole relationship. I don't understand how they don't get it. Why is some momentary fantasy relationship more important than the people who actually love you and sacrifice everything for you? You will be better off without this piece of garbage dangling off you. It's not hard to understand, she is detached from the relationship because she doesn't have OP in her thoughts. She doesn't have OP as a lover, but she sees him like a cash cow or the father of her kids. The point is that she is detached so she doesn't care anymore about him. All actions from this perspective are explainable. Now, she thinks the other dude is her great love that was never meant to be, because there were never consequences. Her marriage is just a mechanical thing while the other relationship was the magical one and the real one. She doesn't feel guilty because she doesn't have feelings for her husband anymore. Her loyalty is to the other dude, even if she tells otherwise. I still don't understand how people can view those who stand by them as appliances for their convenience. I would feel so terrible for even considering such an action. Where are these people's sense of compassion and loyalty? How does that just evaporate? Unfortunately, the problem with reconciliation is you're not only fighting your own demons, but basically having to compete with the emotional attachment between wayward wife and her affair partner. There are reasons why many people on here say don't stay with her. It's because of experience. We have been through this, and know that love fog you have with your wife is just as strong as their cheating fog. But at least for you, lesson learned. Most wayward wife never really get over their APs. Good luck friend. It's insane to me how they view affair partners. Most of the time, they're less attractive and never did a damn thing for them, especially in comparison to what you did for them as their spouse. In the minds of these sick people, years of being there for them, sharing life with them, the gifts, the kids, the memories, the vacations, etc., seem to pale in comparison to some excitement of cheap intercourse. They gave up everything for someone who is simply using you for it. They become obsessed with them. It's so crazy. When you look at my wife's affair partners, they weren't even good looking. Neither were rich and neither were good guys. But when you're a narc and there's some new male attention to be had, I guess you have to pounce. Get off Reddit and hire a damn good attorney. She'll tell you what to do, and not to do, and what to say, and not to say. Follow her advice to the T. She's your advocate. She, unlike anyone else, will be looking out for your well-being as her sole responsibility. Don't BS yourself into thinking you're tough enough to handle this. You aren't. Get a therapist. Talk to family, kids and friends. And in the end, be the best you. That's all you can do right now. Now for last story. Upgrading my soon-to-be ex, to a full-blown ex in 90 minutes. A little backstory. I 34 male first found this sub 8 months ago when struggling with a decision to make. To leave my cheating ex, 30 female, of 11 years, or continue living thinking I'm paranoid and delusional. I'll be honest, without the support I got from every single individual here, I would have gone with the latter. 
It took eight months of sheer turmoil cohabitating with this person but I'm happy to say I made it. And I thank everyone who stuck by me to give me the much needed reality check I needed at the time. I left my ex with no friends or family in tow to give me support, I was depressed for weeks, kept thinking I'll die alone. Slowly but surely as I got closer to the finish line, it got better. I have friends who love me and care about me. I got to leave with my dignity and my integrity at the end, and everything I experienced at the hands of my ex was a lesson in what not to do again. I'm happy and sad and overwhelmed with emotions right now and I just felt like I should share this with anyone struggling. You deserve better, you deserve respect, loyalty and compassion from your partners. And it's your right to stand for what you need. This is not the end, this is just the beginning. At the end, it's a game of endurance, it's not sprint when walking away from a cheater. They will use every trick in the book to hang on to you for dear life, but keep true to your goal and you will see the light at the end. It's done. I'm free lol. Now for the top comments. Now is the beginning of the upward trajectory. Love yourself and look after yourself after all you're the most important person you know. Exactly. Today's definitely all about me haha. It's been a really tough journey, but a rewarding one nonetheless. Learning how to love myself was a tough nut to crack. You are strong and courageous. Always remember who you are and don't let anyone change that. I don't know you, but I am very proud of you after reading this. I always say, life is colorful, sounds like you have found a blank canvas to paint. Peace with you. Thank you so much for your kind words. My face just lit up. You are gonna be more than fine. It gets way better and doesn't feel this horrible for long. I was 31 years married when this happened to me. At 53 living a fun, loving fulfilled life. No longer always checking my back or walking on eggshells is so freeing. The loneliness leaves, and you are open to finding real love, and a respectful partnership like you deserve. Good luck! Oh wow, thank you so much for sharing that with me. I'm definitely confident I'll find happiness. Every passing day I feel less and less lonely and just happy overall. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone. Surviving infidelity, going to tell my wife I want a divorce today. Working up the nerve. We got married about three years ago. A few months after our wedding, I found out she was cheating on me. I was so hurt and angry, but after discussing it, I decided we could try to make things work and I could work on my communication and to be the kind of husband she wouldn't cheat on again. About a year later, I left for active duty orders for about seven months. I came to her sleeping with and messaging I love you to another man on her phone. I left that night, and knew I wanted to leave. I was still in love, so I ended up foolishly coming back to try again. Somehow, I found out that she's been in touch with the same man again through a music app. They communicate by changing the names of playlists with no songs in them, to say what they want to say. It's been killing me to act normal while watching the playlist names change. Last night was the worst, but at least I know for sure the extent of her cheating. She has said she loves him and want to love all over him, and she stated something about sleeping with him. I was a fool to believe that it was only emotional cheating. I guess I just wanted to believe things could still work out. She is the only person I've been with. Almost 11 years, since I was 18. The only person that's ever shown interest in me. So my self-esteem is at an all-time low. I know I'm not very good at communicating, but I was trying to work on it and still will. I think I treated her well still, I kept our home clean and in order. Went on nice vacations, always stopped what I was doing to greet her when she came home from work since I work from home. I feel lost and I suppose I'm just typing this up to get it out since I don't really have anyone to talk to. When she comes home today, I am going to tell her I need a divorce and I refuse to spend another day of my life with someone who loves another man. I don't think I did anything to deserve this. Now for the top advice before reading the update. She is communicating through playlists on a music app? WTF. That is next level sneakiness. Which only demonstrates that 1, she doesn't want to get caught, and 2, doesn't want to lose the sweet deal she's got, having her cake and eating it too. If I may offer this advice, do not tell her you want a divorce today, or ever. She'll only change tactics on you to keep you around and be able to cover up her cheating even more. Get your exit plan in order, like finding where to live, get divorce papers completed and then serve them up to her when you are in a position of strength. If your reserves or AD as you alluded to, base slash command legal can help get you started and pointed in the right direction, 
you deserve better. OP, this is the best course. It may be the one that hurts the most in the short term, keeping this bottled up, but it will likely yield the best result. She will be blindsided before she can come up with a plan. See if you can get screenshots of the back and forth with a fair partner, it may help in the divorce. She is a turd and there is no reason to give her any heads up. The kind of husband she wouldn't cheat on? Dude, you're not a perfect husband. There's no such thing, but the decision to have an affair with someone when you've promised to be faithful to another, is an act of treachery and betrayal. Don't ever think you can control someone else's behavior. All you can do is have boundaries and enforce them. This is a common reaction from guys who get cheated on, as I went through the initial mind screw as well thanks to my ex-wife's gaslighting. It's where they successfully make you think their cheating is some failure on your part, like you drove them to it. You think this way with the BS victim blaming books and religious advice given. Once you break away from that and get smart, you see through the lies. You are worth so much more than to be treated this way. Please go to a doctor and get tested for STDs. Part of the pain is knowing that not only did you do nothing to deserve it, but you did not factor into the equation at all. In the compartmentalized parallel reality of the affair, you do not exist, at least not as her spouse. When the divorce papers are sitting in her hand to be signed, that fantasy world will pop like a bubble. Update, she came home from work. I told her we need to get divorced, and she immediately started yelling at me that all I care about is film stuff. I want to make short films, and going on hiking trips. We traveled a lot, but she never wanted to do certain hiking trips that I do. She is really good at making me feel bad. I told her maybe if she never cheated on me in the first place, I would have been able to work harder to fix things. She packed some stuff, and I left after telling her that she doesn't get to do this to me, and she said she is allowed to love more than one person. I left until she was gone, and now I am home alone trying to feel better and think what to do next. Thank you all for the support. It's been really nice to see. Now for the next story. Inconvenient truth about infidelity. My credentials, male 54, married for 24 years to, female 47, who had affair with her yoga instructor. Two children, female 21 and male 18. Suspicion, investigation, exposure and aftermath follow the classic pattern, he's just a friend, you're paranoid slash jealous, concealment, gaslighting, blame shifting, revisionist marital history, forgiveness, tentative reconciliation, multiple D-days, separation, individual counseling and pending divorce. The only steps we skipped were, 1, I didn't insist on full disclosure of everything they did, didn't see that information as very useful, and 2, we communicated so well and extensively after exposure, that we didn't see any benefit to marriage counseling. So what's the inconvenient truth? Every relationship ends. Yep, every single one. Your relationship will end via either of two possible routes, A, the death of you or your partner, or B, you and or your partner decides to voluntarily terminate the relationship. If you did not want the relationship to end, you will find termination of the relationship to be very disturbing, emotionally difficult and life-altering. This will be the case whether your partner died, cheated on you, abused you, fell out of love with you, or simply decided, for whatever reason, she or he no longer wishes to remain in a romantic relationship with you. Trust me, if you did not want your relationship to end, you won't feel better if your partner informs you he or she no longer wants to remain in the relationship with you, rather than engages in an affair. You may have more personal respect for a former partner who did not cheat, but that won't make the end of the relationship more emotionally palatable if you didn't want it to end. You still will, and should, mourn the end of the relationship. So what's the significance of infidelity? Nothing more than an inflection point at which one or both of the partners must decide whether the relationship should end or not. For the cheater, the infidelity may be an exit affair, or not. For the betrayed, the infidelity may be a deal breaker, or not. In any case, the affair presents a decision point at which each partner should answer the following question, do I want this relationship to end or to continue? In the latter case, it's technically not possible for the relationship to continue. Rather the decision is whether to start a new relationship with your partner after all you've both learned, about the relationship and each other, from the affair. Too often, far too much attention is paid to the infidelity. What happened? How did it happen? Why did it happen? What does it mean? The consumption of all this emotional and intellectual energy detracts from thoughtfully answering the true question, will it be better for me if this relationship ends now? Or if I enter into a new relationship with my partner? The path forward is always the same, acceptance. You must accept what happened. You must accept where you now are as a consequence of what happened. 
You must accept that your future happiness will depend upon the decisions you make, rather than what your partner did or what happened in the past. True but, it's much more polite, dignified and respectful to end the relationship with someone you once claimed to truly love, forever and ever, with a divorce rather than sneaking around behind their back, exposing you to STDs, lies, deceit, unnecessary trauma, humiliation, possible financial infidelity and public ridicule. If you, for some reason, fall out of love, then end it as humanely as possible. You're the one who messed up and said I'd do in forever and always, when actually, you weren't really sure if you were in marital forever true love. If you screwed up, lied to yourself, didn't do your due diligence before committing to lifelong marriage, wasting your spouse's time, and realize down the road that you never should have gotten married, then divorce humanely. Don't psychologically gore and then divorce rip your spouse as many cheaters does with their warped sense of entitlement. As for betrayed spouses, yes, look at cheating as one of the inevitable ends of a relationship. The relationship, as you knew it, is over. Done. Humans are unpredictable and humans change. Just move on to a new chapter and only look back on the good memories. That's what I meant about having more respect for your former, faithful, partner. Trust me, if you did not want your relationship to end, you won't feel better if your partner informs you he or she no longer wants to remain in the relationship with you, rather than engages in an affair. Nah, disagree from me. I have exes from my past who didn't cheat, and it didn't harm me anywhere near as bad. Those girls had the decency to let me keep my dignity, and I still have respect for them as people I once loved. If they called me up and needed my help, I would not hesitate to help them, and I wouldn't expect much in return. I genuinely hope they have good lives even, if I'm not a part of it. I don't ruminate over that stuff. Meanwhile, I would genuinely feel better if my cheating exes all died. For me it's not the same. Thanks for your post, I needed to hear that. But that's not to say I'm happy for anyone who is here, going through horrible things. It hurts very bad when you are a loyal, loving spouse wanting a relationship, but sadly forced to leave the relationship, going through the trauma and finally accepting your fate. Wish I could get over it and accept my fate, but still it is not easy. I'm saving this post. It's so unfair that the betrayed spouses and innocent children have to suffer so much, which they don't deserve. Damn this infidelity. Damn the cheaters with their affair partners. Google radical acceptance and practice what you learn. It helped me turn the corner. I'll bet it will help you too. Now for the last story. Everything he is telling you dear affair partner, he has said before, only back then there was no proof it was a lie. My ex left me for a coworker he had an emotional affair with for like two months. It has been a while now and I am doing okay. I do get stuck on some things. Like him pretending affair partner is the best thing ever, the love of his life. I know it is cheater MO, but I want to have the truth out in the void that is Reddit so I won't forget. I was triggered by my ex-sister-in-law. She told me that for all I know, a fair partner and my ex have a better connection and compatibility than we did. I don't know why she thought that was a comforting thing to say. I just silently decided in that moment I don't want her in my life anymore. She left her husband for another man a few years back, only to go back to him and claim to be happily married, but had some emotional affairs along the way, so she is the worst friend to have, and she is out. It struck me that everything he is saying about her and to her, although that last one is more an assumption, he said to her about me. 13 years ago, he introduced me to his parents. They fell in love with me right away. His dad and I had an instant connection, and I was very close with him. He cried his eyeballs out when all the news broke. His mom proudly proclaimed, I always knew that the first girl my son brings home, is going to be his true love. She told me how I changed him for the better. From a gloomy closed off person to a more open and happy person. His brothers and sisters told me that he lighted up, bloomed, and I improved their connection with him, facilitating conversation and making him feel safe to open up to them. He told me all his deepest and darkest thoughts and fears. I supported him, made him go out of his comfort zone. He called me his best friend, his everything. He said he kept all my love letters because he would never let me forget how much I loved him, and I could never leave him. I promised him I never would and I meant it. Life happened but he never neglected to tell me how much he loved me. How we were perfect for each other. Our personalities were different in all the right ways. I also felt like our strengths covered each other's weaknesses. We would have intimacy, and he would tell me that our bodies were made for each other. Soulmates, forever, him and me. Even the weeks before D-Day, I would wake up with him watching me sleep. Looking lovingly into my eyes and telling me I'm cute, that he loved me. That I made him happy. He couldn't believe we were husband and wife. 
He proudly proclaimed we would make it through anything. Half a year before this happened to me. His older brother was left by his wife of 25 years for an ex she had when she was like 17. She proclaimed how that ex was the love of her life and my brother-in-law was terrible, she never loved him and she was unhappy for years. We discussed it and my ex said she was delusional, weak, stupid. And six months later he does the exact same thing. I imagine him looking to her lovingly, telling her she is the one. She is perfect in every way, and he asks her to never leave him. How they are made for each other. She will gobble it up, but I wonder if it ever pops in her mind that he told me everything before. He made these promises and he did not keep them. She knows exactly how little it took to take him away. It will forever baffle me that a person wants a married man. You are helping him break vows you want to keep to you? You really think you are that special? Probably he can redo our relationship with her. As long as no other sad little person comes for him, he will play the same show with her. 10 years, who knows maybe until the end of his life. People will forget me, they will forget how wonderful the beginning was. They will start to believe that a fair partner and my ex were the better connection, meant to be, true love, yada yada. I will never forget how he felt all that for me and threw it away. I did not have proof he was a liar, or incapable to truly and deeply love. She however had all the proof she needs, she chose to ignore it. Maybe one day she will pay the price, maybe she can live the lie until they die. The fact is, she had proof it is a lie, I did not. For those of you who think that maybe I am petty and a fair partner is the best thing ever and I just have to let my ex be happy with a better connection, I like to say this, better murdered great. There is always better or something that looks better from the outside. I have no illusions that there are men out there I could be just as happy with, the fact is, we chose each other. When you do that, you work to make that person the best connection, you stop looking for others and you do all you can that keep that flame alive. He threw a bucket of ice water over our fire and gasoline on their spark, and is now pretending we never had a bonfire. Now for the comments. When my ex said it was true love and meant to be, I asked him what would have happened if he hadn't met her? Would we still be together or would another true love stumble into his path? He didn't have an answer. I got the answer because the true love partner lasted less than a year. He's still out there looking for the next one. So, it wasn't me, it was an endless quest to fill an endless hole. If the new attachment was genuine and lasted, that's reasonable. But some people are always on the lookout for the next best thing, and partners and family suffer because of it. Maybe it takes months or maybe years, but at some point, they spot the greener grass and go for it. I wonder how this will play out. My gut says he is trying to fill an ever-growing void. Mine literally said, I could have stayed with you for the rest of my life and it would have been a happy life, but I deserve something more special, he told me variations on this story, but it all boiled down to, nothing is ever enough. I am convinced she isn't enough because I met her, he was trying to make us friends, she is shallow and boring. Her humor is limited and childish. She is not the magical creature that will make him happy. However, I fear he can't be alone and will hold on to her as he did to me, until some other sad little girl comes along. In my case, it took 13 years so who knows. Happy you are out dearie. May he keep on filling the void and may your hearth be full. In my opinion, the affair partner is always a downgrade because they normally know the person is already engaged with someone, but they chose to do everything in their power to destroy the couple. Even if your BF or GF is flirting or whatever with them, a mature and decent human being will think and say, look, this is not okay, you should sort things out with your significant other first, not putting all the blame on the affair partner, your ex is the one who cheated on you, but you get my point. So, you'll always be above a cheater and a person who encourages cheating. And of course, your ex will do everything in their power to show that he is happy. He has to show that cheating on you is worth it huh? But he knows what he has done, and unless he's a narc or psychopath, I'm sure he feels bad but he hides in his monkey branching relationship. I started to believe he is a covert narc. I agree, a significant other has the final responsibility, but there is something wrong with a person who flirts and hunts a married man, I have seen some of her efforts and she was going for it hard. In my dating life, I have been in a situation that after some chatting and flirting, a guy told me he was married. He said he was so unhappy and I was so different from his wife, so much better. I just felt how sad it is. Because if you enter this type of dynamic, it will always be about how you differ from the wife, not about who you are. I blocked the guy right away, but I had a flash forward about how it would play out. The discussions would all be about her, how bad she is, when he will leave her yada yada. I did not want to be part of anything of the sort and it just showed me again how pathetic she really is. 
And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.